All right, guys, uh, now back to our next data structure talk after um, we've done linked list, we've done uh, stacks, and binary search trees, now on to a little bit about queues. Um, they're even simpler, I'd say, than stacks, but they're the exact opposite, okay? Stacks, now, if I have a bunch of data and I put something now on the list, now it's the top, right? It's the, and, and, and then if I put someone else, he's the top guy. So when I come to deal with the stack, I have to deal with it one at a time, taking things off the top. And that was good for uh, certain situations, like if you, know, if you had past signals for your robot, your robot's doing a bunch of other things, it's filtering, you know, path planning, and then it comes back and has all the sensor signals to deal with. It wants to deal with the most recent guy, right? Who wants to deal with the sensor signal from an hour ago? Now, queues are the opposite. Say you're having a bunch of traffic on your server, right? And a bunch of people are trying to connect, and you want uh, someone comes in, you don't want another client to trump them just because somebody just came on top of them. No, uh, I made a T for Trump there. <laughs> but uh, what you want to do is you want to deal with that guy first, right? So a queue is like a, a line in real life. When you get there first, you're dealt with first. And everything behind him, everyone behind him is just put next in line, okay? And so here's a, a here, queues are pretty uh, quick. Um, just run through. So there's two kind of terminologies we use for that. Hang on, let me go to the top. Um, enqueuing, putting somebody in a list, and dequeuing, taking the first person from the list, right? And then we just have is empty to check if it's empty, and then init queue just to make sure that our top and tail are set to null. So, okay, so here's the deal with structs, uh, the structs that we're going to make. So we make a queue node, just a someone, like a node inside of the queue, that's all this is, just hold the number and it holds the guy behind it, the guy next in line. If you turn around in line, you can only see the guy behind you, right? Okay, so it's kind of similar to our length list discussion. Uh, the queue itself can point at the top and the tail. Now, this is important uh, because if the top and the tail are the same guy, we know we're, um, well, there's actually two ways to tell if you're empty. One is you can just tell if the top guy's next is empty and also if top and tail are the same person. Um, tail is useful uh, in its own right, but we'll get there. So I just have four functions, initializing the queue, just setting top and tail to null. Uh, otherwise, you'll get some errors when you try to access the variables inside of them when they're null. Uh, it's a common error you've seen us do in previous videos. Um, next is just checking if it's empty, and queue and dequeue. Um, for my main function, all we're going to do is we're just going to make a queue. We're going to put a bunch of things in the queue, and we're just going to, well, it's not empty, just keep popping them off and printing them out. It's going to be pretty simple. You'll see how that works in a sec. So initialize the queue, here's what I was talking about, where we make a new queue, we have to allocate the memory of queue type. And so uh, even though I want to use queues of pointer, so I have to remember to put in um, you know, the address every time, and so I can just automatically start using the arrows and dereferencing and messing with it, um, I'm going to, when I define my struct queue, I'm just going to call queue a pointer. But when I allocate memory, well, a pointer doesn't have any size itself. I'm, I give it a queue type that's not a pointer. So that when I want to allocate the memory of how much the pointer should be pointing at, I can give it this guy, and it'll know how much memory this guy should be, right? So I'm initializing the queue, I'm saying new queue, allocate the memory of whatever an actual queue size would be to this pointer. Hey guys, uh, that's uh, just doing a quick review on that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what we're doing here is, um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So it is empty. Okay, so we take in the queue and we just check is the top null? If so, then yeah, it's empty. Just return that. Pretty easy. Just go return that expression. End queues. Well, how do I get to put, put a guy on the queue? Well, I just put a number, right? I'm going to make a new node. Okay? I'm going to allocate this memory of size of a normal node that's not a pointer, right? That's why I made the queue node pointer and queue node. Because if I try to say allocate the memory of the size of a pointer, well, a pointer doesn't have any memory. Right? It just points to an address that contains memory in itself. So that's why I have the difference here. I'm just going to give him num, and then I'm going to make his new node, his next is going to be null, because he's going to be popped in at the end, right? He's the newest guy. So his next, there's no one behind him. He's at the end, right? And then, uh, this is why tail is important here. So if it's empty, we'll just make the top the new node, and just make its tail, uh, the tail of the queue new node as well. Make the top of the queue new node. Make the tail new node. And then uh, we already have its number and its next set, so we don't need to do that. Otherwise, we need to make the tail of the node. We may, need to make his next guy, the new guy coming in, and the new tail him, right? Because now he's the tail. So the tail allows us, we need to know the tail, even though we can't interact with it. 
just so we know where to put guys in, right? If we know where the end is, we know where to slide guys in, right? And then we just have the previous guy now point to him, so when we're coming down, we can keep the jump alive. Now for the final function, dequeuing. If it's empty, we're just going to print out the queue's already empty and just return. Now if it's not empty, um, our temporary is going to be our top guy, right? And then what I have to do is the temporary num is the top guy's number, right? And then the new top guy is now the top guy's next, okay? Um, because I'm taking him out, so the next guy that was in line, the guy behind him, is now in front, right? The reason I had to hold him in temp is because I want to free that memory, okay? Because I allocated it, so the garbage collector will not automatically get rid of it, so I have to free it, so free temp, okay? And then I return the number, okay? And we just come back up, we're just putting 52, 34, so... In this queue, 54 should be first, 32, then 12, then 27, then 34. That's how it should go. Last time we did with stacks, when we were going to print every guy off, we were going to get it in reverse order. But now when we pop everybody off the queue, in this case, dequeuing instead of calling pop, we should get the same exact order. So while it's not empty, just keep popping people off the front. And you see, we get it in the exact order that we put it in. So great. Pretty quick, pretty dirty, um, pretty useful uh, when you're dealing with error messages or people coming to servers and whatnot and dealing with that. In fact, if you've done Python servers in the background, that's how they're dealt with. Uh, you know, with, with outcoming clients coming in, it just forms a queue and deals with them front to back. It's uh, honestly a logical way to progress down and handle them. So I hope you uh, learned something new, and that's the end of that. I'll see you next time.